What's up, my fishing friends? Welcome back to the Wade Fishing Experience. Today, I'm going to show you how I use Google Earth to find fishing spots, y'all. If you're not using this tool to help you locate Wade Fishing Spots, you're missing out on some amazing stuff. So I'm going to kind of guide you through my process um, of how I find fishing spots by identifying different types of structure. So we're going to look at a bunch of different types of structure today, y'all, but just know this, the best fishing spots have multiple forms of structure. For example, if you've got a fishing spot that's got a line of docks adjacent to a grass flat that has access to deeper water and say also some oyster bars or rocks, awesome. That's going to be a good fishing spot, y'all. So let's get started. And we will get started with basically the easiest structure to identify and the one that is going to yield um, the most good fishing spots for wade fishing, and that is grass flats. So let's take a look at one of my favorite grass flats, a place where I basically cut my teeth, and that's Picnic Island. Let's zoom in on the flat down here at Picnic Island. So this is a really cool grass flat for a couple of reasons. It's a, it's a pretty big grass flat. It runs from basically the pier um, and boat launch uh, at, at the northern end of Picnic Island up here all the way down to the tip. So this grass flat is really cool because it's got a lot of potholes in it. As you can see, like right here, right here, these are the areas that the fish are going to hold around. They'll be on the edges of these big holes waiting to ambush prey. So as you can see, this, this grass flat is all pockmarked up. So there's a bunch of really good spots to target fish here. Now, I will share a little trick with y'all. If you are on the main beach at Picnic Island, there is a blue building. I think this is it right here. It's the bathrooms. And if you use that building as a marker and head straight out onto the main beach, one of the biggest holes in the grass is going to be right out in front of you. And on either side of that hole, you will slay the trout, y'all. So there's a tip. Trout Trout season, as I like to call it, it's coming up soon. Even though we are not able to keep the fish, uh, the trout actually really starts to heat up in September and, of course, gets really good into the fall and winter. So that's grass flats. Let's also talk about points. Now, points are great because that's where the current flow is amplified and current flow is key. All right. So this tip point of Picnic Island is great. It gets good current flow coming around here. So that's awesome, but even better on a, like a more micro level, I'll zoom in here. This little tiny rock jetty point is awesome. Y'all, the current rips around here. So you can come in here with some live bait or artificials, really whatever your, your, your pick is on a strong tide and there will be predators waiting in this, in the eddies and the backwash of the current here to just wax bait fish. So points, very cool structure to target. Next, I wanna talk about bridges and causeways, and there is no shortage of them around Tampa Bay and you know the wider area that we have access to along the Gulf beaches and, and everywhere um, in the vicinity. So Tampa Bay itself has sort of like three main bridges, the Gandy Bridge down here, 275 or the Howard Franklin, which really isn't fishable from a, a wade fishing shore perspective, and the Courtney Campbell Causeway. Out of the three, the, the Courtney Campbell is my favorite. Um, and let's just zoom in here and I'll talk about a little bit about what makes causeways good fishing areas. So this is Nova Southeastern, and this is the Courtney Campbell Causeway Beach. Now, I will say this, it does cost $15 to park at Courtney Campbell Causeway Beach, but in terms of fishing spots, it's one of the best, so it's worth it. If you zoom in here, you'll notice this deep water channel running right along the causeway. They generally dredge out these areas along the causeways, so you're gonna have access to deep water right near the shore, which is always a good thing. And then if you kind of follow it to the west, 
you run into a nice grass flat here, which is awesome, another form of structure. And then if you come across that grass flat, it meets another bridge here. So that's just an awesome area around the causeway. And even um, you can kind of follow it out into like the middle of the bay here. And you can fish these little bridges depending on access. I'm not sure if that last one you can actually fish, but I'll zoom down here a little farther and show you um, ones that I know you can access. So like here, where this, where this stretch of bridge is, sunset view, I don't really want to call it, but um, I think this is like the far west end of Ben T. Davis Beach. Cool area, you can fish the rocks and the, the pylons around the bridge right there. And then also, um, here's another small bridge down here along this grass flat. That it's, actually, no, this is the one that you can access from Ben T. Davis, I was mistaken before. So you can park down here as Ben T. Um, for access, but there's, a, there's parking uh, all along the, the causeway depending um, on this particular area because there's like uh, the access roads. So those are cool spots. If we zoom on down to Gandhi, it's the same type of story. These are part, these are spots you can park, walk right out, wade, or even just fish from shore and are awesome. So we've got the South Gandhi Channel down here towards the west end of Gandhi Bridge. Very cool area. Again, you can see this deep water. You've got a cut here um, leading out onto the flat. That's super cool. And um, yeah, causeways and bridges, y'all. There is no shortage. And just to give you an example, like. You know, you don't have to stick to Tampa Bay. I mean, let's say we go over here to Clearwater <clears throat> and zoom in. And here's another causeway, you know. Um, there's, there's some really cool flats uh, along this. It's the Memorial Causeway. I called it the Clearwater Causeway, I think, a minute ago. But um, anyway, so just great forms of structure, bridges and causeways, classic fishing destinations. Next, I want to talk about rocks. There's some really cool spots that have rock features. One of those being the rock jetty at the American Legion. So let me zoom in a little bit closer on this area and we'll talk about that. That is not the Legion. I missed, here we go. Okay, so here is the American Legion. And you can see sort of this rock jetty that it is housed on. And these rocks run all the way around the legion. But what I like to do is when the tide is high, the fish will, the predator fish will push bait fish up into these rocks. And I, many and many a morning on high tide, I've seen just a bunch of topwater action, just fish crash and bait on top. And I've caught a, a lot of nice snook and reds on, on top water in this area along the rocks. So rocks are another awesome form of structure. And if we zoom a little farther north on the Westinghouse flat here, we will run into another type of structure that I wanna talk about and that is spoil islands, y'all. So here is a spoil island. A lot of times these are you know, mostly mangroves, um, this one is awesome because it's a mix of like mangrove and oysters. I've caught a lot of fish off this spoil island, y'all. Um, there's usually nice little cuts and some deeper trenches around parts of each of these islands and definitely a place to target um, redfish, snook, especially will work around these, these mangrove islands, spoil islands all the time. So another one to keep in mind. Moving on, we will head a bit farther north up to Cypress Creek because I wanna talk about creeks. Creeks are natural highways for fish and they are awesome places to target, especially when there's a lot of tidal flow. So let's get up here to Cypress Creek. Google Maps not cooperating, of course. Okay, so here's Cypress Point. And the creek system I want to show y'all is right here. So as you can see, this creek system runs sort of all the way back here, back up into this little cove. 
and the fish will push back up in here with the incoming tide. So when the tide is high or, or on the incoming tide, I'll sit around the mouth of this creek and fish it there. It's a great spot for live baiting. You can just kind of sit there and wait for stuff to cruise through. When the tide is falling, pushing out, the fish will come out of this creek system and they will pour out onto the grass flats on either side foraging for food. So great ambush points along these creek systems, y'all. I cannot stress it enough. Creeks, if you can access them, make amazing forms of structure to target when you're looking for fishing spots. All right, we've got a couple more forms of structure I wanna talk about. And the first one is oyster bars. I talked a little bit about oysters um, when I was showing y'all the spoil islands earlier, but when you're talking about just strictly oyster bars, uh, I think a redfish, and and that's um, that's uh, what this this spot reminds me of down here at Pinellas Point in St. Pete. So I'll give you sort of a, a zoom in view here of what you're looking for on the map. These are oyster bars. Boom, boom, boom. This is like a big line of them, y'all. I mean, this is super cool terrain. Zoom out a little bit, and I'll talk a little bit about why I love this area. All right, you've got this huge line of oyster bars sits on a grass flat. This is a this is also a giant sandbar and you can walk out and have access to deeper water. So and also there's a hole here. There's a deep hole by this dock and by these people's houses. Just a great area, dude. This this is redfish haven right here. The last form of structure I want to talk about is docks. Y'all, I love dock fishing. Dock fishing is not just for folks who have boats. And you can find cool places that have these dock lines that are weightable, like Jungle Prodded in Vias Park in St. Pete. Now, the key to wade fishing around docks is finding ones that are accessible, that are not too deep to fish. And Jungle Prada is one of them. This is a cool area in that it is, these docks sit on sort of like the edge of a grass flat. And then there's also some deeper water. And depending on how far up you work, some more spoil islands. So like right here, this area, you can kind of see how it's a little deeper water there and more defined. There's a nice patch of grass right here. Like this is a cool area. Um, you're gonna have to do a little bit of trucking if you wait up this far from Jungle Prada, but I've, I've waited like 20 docks north from the, the boat ramp, it's totally doable. So those are the, the types of structures I look for when I'm finding fishing spots using Google Earth. There's also a couple other points I wanted to go over with y'all before I end this video. And the first one is how to tell hard bottom versus soft bottom. And why that's important is there, you know, you can look at a flat and think it looks like an awesome place to fish and you get there and then you realize that the bottom is soft and you sink in and it's like not even weightable. So let me go up here to uh, Safety Harbor and a spot that my buddy and I were, had been looking at on the map for a while. And then when we tried to fish it, we just realized that the bottom was really no good. Let me see here, where are, we, where are we at? Okay. So yeah, right here by this creek, we were like excited about, but the bottom is just not that good. It's, as you can see, it's a darker up here and just, it's easy to sink in and it makes for mucky sort of waiting. Not cool, but that's, while that area isn't terrible, it's still weightable. Like you're not going to just sink into your, your waist and, and be stuck. I will show you an area where that is a very possible outcome. Let's go back to Cypress Point here. And I will zoom in on this little cove back here because I know this area is like, I don't think it's a sinkhole, but look how, how dark it is and just mucky looking. It's soft, that's soft bottom right there, y'all. You will, you do not want to be waiting in that. But let's go back to Picnic Island 
and I'll give you, you know, you will look at it as an example of a spot that just has awesome hard bottom. It's that light color, the lighter the better, sandy hard bottom. And, and when there's usually when there's a lot of grass around, that's a good sign that's going to be hard bottom too, but that's not always the case. But that's just something to think about. You don't want to show up to a fishing spot, you know, and not be able to weight it. It's just the worst. It's frustrating. And then you got to pivot and, and go somewhere else. So always spot test an area too, if you're not sure, y'all. Um, there was a, a spot I was at in Cedar Key once. And thankfully, I spot checked it because if I would have just stepped off the bank into this water, I would have sank probably to my waist or deeper and been in a world of trouble. So always spot test an area. And no, understand that satellite maps don't always present the most current information. Fishing holes change. You know, the bay changes, the gulf changes, things change with these spots. For an example, there was a place I went to last winter along the Courtney Campbell. Well, if you look at it on Google Earth, it looks like a nice grass flat. I got there and the whole area was devoid of grass. I didn't catch a single fish. So just something to think about. And it's always best to explore new wade fishing spots at low, low tide. The lower, the better. Um, and winter time is actually, winter is the best time to explore because we get a lot of negative low tides. And those negative low tides help you get familiar with an area that you're wading. You'll be able to identify structure easier on the low water. And you'll be able to identify those areas you want to avoid if they have, you know, mucky water or, or you know, anything that you're going to want to uh, avoid that that low negative tide will help you see that so that is how i use google earth to find my fishing spots to go waiting y'all i hope y'all enjoyed the video before you leave smash that subscribe button and i appreciate y'all tuning in we'll see you next time on the wade fishing experience y'all 